Hi, this is Asin. You are now watching Asin Math TV. Today, I would like to share the Fisher's Nidical Distribution, or more commonly known as the F distribution in SVS. Consider the random variable x follows F distribution with alpha equal to 0 0.05, first degree of freedom 5, second degree of freedom 20. Let's consider some examples where we usually face this kind of problem when dealing with hypothesis testing. Let's compute the p-value when the test statistics is computed. For example, the first example, before we are able to compute the p-value, we should remember that to input any data in the data field because the data field should not be empty. Otherwise, we are not able to compute. Now we can go to transform, look for compute variable. Since we have two examples here, I'm going to type p1 under the target variable to represent the first p value. For the labor, we are going to type probability of x less than 0 0.122, the complete expression. Click on continue, proceed to the numeric expression. We should look for the cumulative distribution function CDF, CDFF R. First question mark is the test statistics, which is 0 0.122 for this case. Second question mark is the first degree of freedom, which is 5 for this example. Second degree of freedom, 20. Click on continue and we should obtain the p-value as we can see here. If you want more decimal point, go to variable view, increase the decimals accordingly. Now let's try for the second example since we have more than but SPS always used less than. Very simple, we can use 1 minus. We just have to change the test statistics to the desired number 3.788. Don't forget to change the target variable since this is the second example I'm going to use P2. And also the labor change to more than. 3.788. Press continue and OK, and we should obtain the probability or the p value. Also, the same, change the decimals if needed. If we are dealing with two tail tests, remember to take the value times 2 as our p value. Now, let's try for obtaining the critical value when the significant level is given. Go to transform also compute variable. This time I'm going to use C1. Type and labor we change to probability of x less than k is equal to 0 0.01. Click on continue. Numeric expression delete. This time we should look for inverse df. Look for inverse function f function of the first question mark is the probability or the significant level which is 0 0.01 we should bear in mind that if this is two tier test we should take 0 0.005 which is 0 0.01 divided by 2 next the first degree of freedom 5 second degree of freedom 20 press ok and we should obtain there critical value as we can see here also the same go to variable view increase the decimal point if needed for the second example transform compute change c1 to c2 type and labor change the expression we have more than k is equal to 0 0.01 since XPS uses less than cumulative, but this is more than cumulative. So what we have to do here is to apply transformation. We have two methods here. Let's try for the first method. Change the position of the degree of freedom, 25, and we take 1 over. Click on OK, and we should obtain the value, as we can see here. Increase the decimal if needed. If we don't like this method, we could also use another method. Go to transform, compute variable, numeric, 
expression, we just have to change the probability to 1 minus alpha, which means I will take 0 0.99, while remain the degree of freedom as 5 and 20 respectively. Click on OK and we should obtain exactly the same critical value as we can see here. Now if you are asked to compare two distributions with reverse degrees of freedom, which means that we need to construct two curves on the same chart. What we have to do here is first generate a series of x values. To get it done, we can make use of Excel. We know that f distributions is always non-negative. So we start from zero, press enter, select the value that we type, go to fill, look for series, generate by column. We take step value of 0 0.001. We should stop at, for example, eight. We don't have to take a very big value. Click on OK. Shift Control down to select, Control C to copy. Back to SPS, paste the value. Go to variable view, change the name to x. We don't have to change the decimal point for the x value because this is not really important. What we need is only the shape. Now proceed to generate the probability distribution. Go to transform, compute variable. We can name as P1 as probability. We can label as for the x follows f distribution with 0 0.05, 5, and 20. Continue. Numeric expression, look for PDF, probability density function. Look for f distribution, the probability density function for f. Up, first question mark is the x values. Second question mark is the first degree of freedom, 5. Second, 20. Click on OK and we should obtain the probability distribution. Also, we can ignore the format of the numbers. Proceed to the second probability distribution, compute, change to 2. This time, we should have inverse degrees of freedom, 20 followed by 5. Click on continue, 20 followed by 5. Five. Click on OK and we should obtain two probability distributions now. Proceed to graphs, look for chart builder, OK. Look for the last option, the dual assets. Choose the second graphs, double click. All we have to do here is move X to the X asset, one of the distribution to one of the Y asset and the other to the other y axis. If we need a title, click on Titles or Footnotes. Click on Title 1 and we type the title here. Apply and we click on OK. And we should obtain the graphs with the complete shape as we say, see here. If we have different maximum point, we need to standardize them. What we have to do here is double click on the graph Click on one of the numbers of the y axis value. Change to exactly the same ending point or maximum value. Go to scale. The ending point here is 0 0.8, or the maximum should be changed to 0 0.8. Click on apply, and that should have exactly the same ending point. And this comparison is valid. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this. See you.